Good morning. morning. We have had a bit of a late start just because we needed to catch up on some editing and work, but we are now heading out and our first stop is to go to a Confucian shrine. So let's go. So this is a really interesting setup. So they have everything divided in, but they also have a liquid section. I feel like it's specifically made for this kind of thing. So you detach this, put this in the waste because you can't recycle this. And then you put the straw in recyclables. Same with the cap. You then put the ice into the liquid bit. And then you put the resting cup in recyclables. Genius. They really do think of everything here. The tickets to get into Jungmyo Royal Shrine were a thousand won each, which is one Canadian dollar. This Confucian shrine was used by the royal family during the Joseon dynasty as a means of burying and memorializing deceased kings and queens. After a three-year mourning period, inscriptions about these kings and queens would be put onto tablets. Those tablets would then be taken to one of these buildings on this site and then enshrined there for everybody else to see and to honor and respect their ancestors. As part of the funeral rites, then obviously there were certain objects that needed to be part of that traditional ceremony and obviously these needed to be stored somewhere, so that is the purpose behind the building behind me. alluded to, the Jongmyo Confucian Shrine was used by the Joseon Dynasty to memorialize their deceased kings and queens. And I've read some conflicting reports on when this was actually built. The general consensus is that it was built between 1392 and 1395 at the order of actually the first Joseon king. And this place has such spiritual and historical significance that it's actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site. also known as Zhongzhong. This was where the burial rituals would be happening and also where the shrines for the deceased kings and queens were kept. Initially, there were only seven different rooms where that would be taking place, but as more and more kings and queens were buried here, then they then expanded that to 19 in total. It got so much that they ended up actually creating additional buildings so that they could keep the shrines in them. Unfortunately, because they're undergoing reconstruction work right now, then this part is closed, but I hope you can tell from the video the sense of the scale of this place and the significance because it is vast. One of the things that strikes me about Jungmyo Shrine is that it could really easily be mistaken for a palace. All of the buildings have similar architecture in the sense that they have these sloped roofs and that there's multiple buildings, there's courtyards and so on. They even have similar decorations with dragons and so on. But to me, the biggest difference is that this is far more muted in terms of color. The palaces are vibrant and have a rainbow color, whereas here it is definitely just a reddish wood color as well as green. I think the whole idea behind that is to really make it as minimalist as possible so that the focus is on respecting the dead. And I think as a result of that, that combined with the 
parkland that we see around it really contributes to a sense of peace, tranquility, serenity, which I think is exactly what it was designed for. And certainly as we walk through it, it's just really calming, which has been lovely actually, really nice. We come to a convenience store to pick up, you guessed it, some more onigiri. We have now made it to Jogyesa Temple, which is an icon of Korean Buddhism, which was apparently established in 1395, around the time where a lot of other buildings from the Joseon dynasty were established. Let's take a look around. Wandering through the Jogyasa temple has been really interesting to me because it's quite different from other Buddhist temples that we've seen. From my recollection, the other temples have not been on as big of grounds, I guess. They've been just one temple, whereas this has a few different buildings and the gardens are absolutely gorgeous here. There are the most stunning flowers like vibrant yellows and pinks and purples. There's a pathway that is lined by bushes that have been carved into Zodiac characters. And even the buildings, they're the same architecture and vibrant colors as the Joseon temples. So I guess that's very characteristic of the times here, whereas other Buddhist temples we've seen in different countries have been red and gold predominantly. Yeah, this seems to be not just a Buddhist temple, but an entire kind of Buddhist outreach center. It seems like not only is there a temple behind us, and we haven't got in that it's there in the Buddhist right now, but um, just over the road, it seems like there is an opportunity to provide food by monks. You can also stay at the temple to see what the life of a Buddhist monk is like so it seems like it's not just about an opportunity for worship but also an opportunity for education about buddhism in this country but yeah all in all it's a beautiful setting it's kind of another one of those which is like right slap bang in the middle of the city so you kind of you'd miss it if you weren't looking for it but it's an absolute gem and it's free to come wander around the shrine and the temple are maybe a 20 minute walk away from one another and you get to go through the Insidong neighborhood which is just full of really cute cafes, restaurants, and little craft stores I'd say. Yeah. Local handmade wares are sold so it's just a nice walk through the city. Now to head back to our accommodation for a little bit, chill out, get some work done and hopefully we'll be out later in the evening. Hey gang, so our day was going swimmingly and we had lunch and then all of a sudden Rachel started feeling pretty ill to the point where she was feeling faint, quite dizzy and so we went home and she attempted to sleep it off but unfortunately she's still feeling absolutely no better. So as a result then for the last evening in Seoul we had something lined up and she doesn't want me to miss out, which is so nice of her. She's the best person in the world. 
And so with that, then I am going to go solo for this part of the video. Let's see how this goes. I have made it to the Hongdae neighborhood of the city for a very particular reason. Now, as many of you may or may not know, then I absolutely love singing to death. And apparently, Korea, alongside Japan, has one of the best scenes for karaoke in the world, not least in Seoul. Here, they call it Noribang and there are a number of different noibangs that are available in the city so i'm going to go to arguably one of the most famous ones to give it a try Okay, so here we are. I have my little booth. I've got a set of instructions on how to work the keypad and select my songs. I've got some sanitary mic covers just to make sure I'm being clean about it. And now I think it's time to sing. Awesome. My voice is very out of practice, unfortunately, so I ended up giving out within about half an hour. So I kind of had to vary the difficulty level throughout, but uh, that was really good fun. And considering the fact that that was $18 for one solitary person to sing in a room for an hour, that's amazingly good value. So that's kind of the upmarket version of the Nore Bangs here. Apparently there is also like a coin operated one, which is kind of like a jukebox, but for karaoke. So I'm going to give that a try as well, just for like maybe one or two songs. And then I'm uh, going to turn tail and head back home to my sick but wonderful girlfriend who let me do this. And just like that, looks like I've got two songs extra for one whole dollar. 
Let's do this. I'm happy to say that you can also select English for this one, so this makes navigation so much easier. Yeah, the night's not over, you are not trying hard enough. I have to say, I freaking love this concept. It gives you basically big studio vibes, so you just feel like you can belt all day. This is really cool. Um, I love this as a concept, especially considering that this is like seen as a bit of like a halfway point if you're like between bars or you're kind of trying to start the night off, you've already had a few drinks and stuff like that, then this is the best possible way of doing it. So good, and because of the fact that you choose by song rather than by time in a booth, it gives you all the time in the world to search for the right song that you really want to sing before you sing it. Genius concept. I love it. Feeling it all begin to slide Am I just like you? Alright, that's a wrap. Now, time to go back and catch up with Rachel, see how she's doing. After the fun exploits of the evening, I'm now back. Rachel is still, unfortunately, a little bit under the weather, so she's not making an appearance. She sent her love. Considering it was the last night in Seoul, then... It's turned out to be a pretty good one. Career's nice. We'll hopefully be back again. But until next time, take care and keep smiling.